can you introduce a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you met, how you joined Aptos and what you were doing here? Yes, uh, so I'm Ash, as Sunny said. Uh, I'm Senior Vice President at the Aptos Foundation. I've had a very privileged career in consumer technology. Uh, I got my start in Spotify when they launched oh. in the US, <laughs> scaling growth in the market. And I moved to YouTube, which you know, pioneered the creator economy wow. on the internet. And it that privilege continues here at Aptos. Okay. I'm not an engineer, I'm a marketer, I'm a salesperson, and I love selling the best technology alongside the most ambitious engineers. And so that's how I came to Aptos. When I think about my role here at Aptos, foundations are really meant to invest and support in infrastructure and startups that help grow the imagination of what's possible on the network, but also the usage. So my job focuses on DeFi, partnerships, our grants, startups, and accelerators, as well as investor relations. It's the ecosystem, right? The ecosystem is made of many parts. So thank you again for your time. And uh, so I want to go deeper into what you shared yesterday and th maybe this morning. Yesterday, you said that Aptos has crossed the tipping point uh, from being a contrarian choice in tech uh, to becoming a platform that's ready for the real world. What's changed? What makes you feel that now is the moment for blockchain to finally break through? Well, first of all, I think the West is learning from the East, specifically in markets like Korea, China, and Japan, on how crypto can be more than just speculation, but provide real world opportunities through blockchain. The West is finally catching up with clear regulation mm -hmm. and policies. And I think that combined force opens up a tranche of builders and innovators in technology globally to start accepting blockchain as an applied technology and less of a contrarian choice, oh. number one. Number two, it's important to note that Aptos always was built with this in mind. It was originated at Facebook as a blockchain or distributed network to move value from a billion user internet economy from one app to another app, mm -hmm. plugging in with providers and services. So the engineers that have built the blockchain and the technology have always had this thesis in mind. And we are so grateful that over the course of these last three years of us being in market, but also standing on the shoulders of giants who've been building in crypto for more than a decade, that the world is ready to look at this as an applied technology that can change the lives of billions of users. Great answer. You also highlighted that some impressive milestones, over 330 live projects, 2.5 billion transactions, and over a billion dollars in TVL. Uh, but the part that stood out was when you said, this is the result of extreme human coordination. Can you expand on that? What does human coordination mean in the context of Aptos? And how do you keep that spirit alive uh, as the ecosystem scales globally? Well, I'll expand beyond the concept of Aptos and just talk about decentralization and Web3. Okay. You know, in order for us to achieve the first principles of self-sovereignty and financial access, we all bear the burden, individuals and communities, of responsibility. And so that's why I believe crypto, to get to this state and to continue moving forward, is a human coordination effort. How localized communities spanning from big enterprise to regular users all align on a first principle of how exactly. Web3 can shape the world. Aptos, in a, in a nutshell, is a much younger ecosystem and chain mm -hmm. relative to the other bigger ecosystems. Yeah. Number one, we've been in market for just over two years. Yeah. Number two, That's we amazing. are a new programming language in Move. And the concept of Move came from Facebook, where you needed a heightened level of smart contract security to actually power trillions of transactions and billions in money movement. And so we are a unique choice yeah. when you look at the historical crypto market. But even as such, we've made tremendous progress just in the last year alone. And one metric that I appreciate alongside the other ones you mentioned is app revenues, which means the startups that are building on Aptos, are they sustainable businesses? Are yeah. they growing? Are they launching diversified product lines? And we've just reached top 10 across all blockchains in that metric. That metric is the true metric of the health of a network and an ecosystem, and we're only going to accelerate it from here. I can't agree with you more. Talking about community, um, how do you think Aptos community building approach differs from other ecosystems uh, that came before it or is doing right now? Is there something unique about the way Aptos connects developers, investors, and users across uh, geographical and cultures? Yes, it's a very good question. You know, 
In this market, as you know, a lot of usage and adoption comes from market catalysts, right? Whether it is macro socioeconomic catalysts or unfortunately sometimes COVID-19 sometimes or use cases like NFTs and meme coins. I would say the catalyst for Aptos has been and all and will be in the future on the, the need for real world applications to be built that want highly performant, highly reliable, invisible infrastructure, right? When you go to Google or you go to Facebook or you go to any big large scale and consumer and enterprise business, they don't sell you the infrastructure. No. They sell you the value. But in order to sell you the value, they have to have deeply reliable infrastructure. That's right. We believe that is the case. The type of community that we intend on building and has found us in the last year are people who understand this profoundly. They are founders who don't need help with distribution. They know how to monetize. They need a reliable distributed system that has the UX of Web2 so they can compete with the internet economy. And those are the founders we are cultivating. Those are also the investors that are interested in investing. These businesses are atypical from what we've seen in traditional startups in crypto, right? They're longer view businesses, they're revenue first businesses, and they're using stable coins, for example, as a large adoption mechanism. And with regulatory clarity, you're gonna only see more investors unlock who have been sitting out outside of crypto but investing in AI and cute and environmental science and robotics flood with capital. And we intend to capture a lot of that value for our economy. Again, you spoke very warmly of, uh, about Asia's contribution to that after growth, especially mentioning uh, Korea, Seoul, and how that energy carried forward to New York. Can you talk about that connection? How important is Asia and maybe Korea in particular uh, in the next phase of Aptos global expansion? Yes, well, as we know, Asia is an overly simplistic word to describe yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a very diverse community and culture. Korea specifically has always been at the forefront of not only crypto, but also global technological innovation. Right. If you think about the size of Korea <laughs> and its impact on technical innovation, it is incredible to think about. And so it is so bullish that they also philosophically believe in crypto as another wave of innovation. And so for us, we treat this market as a global market, not just something on the list. And some of the things we want to do in Korea, if you may or may not know, in 2024, we had an amazing entry into Korea. Yes, exactly. And we intend to double down on that. Not only working with enterprises like Latte to power everyday consumer experiences through blockchain and expanding that business use case, but also working with consumers who look at crypto as a means to transfer value every day. And we are very excited. It is a top market of focus for us, and it is a global market. That's great. So as you just said, one of the strongest, your strongest points yesterday was about uh, regulatory clarity. You said it's extremely core on onboarding the next billion users. Uh, what kind of a regulatory progress uh, gives you optimism right now? And uh, how do you balance innovation uh, with the responsibility of operating in a more mature, uh, regulated markets? Yes, so if you have or haven't heard, the Genius Act passed in the US was a very critical moment in time. Right. The next piece will be the Clarity Act. Both of these two things together offer a few things. One is consumer safety. You cannot onboard billions of users if there is not predictability and safety to new emerging technologies. AI will go through this, YouTube and user-generated social platforms went through this, crypto is now going to go through this. And with that comes an inflection point where we don't say, hey, is this a crypto company? We just say, these are companies utilizing crypto. And that is a huge turning point. And I think there are tons of companies, Fortune 50 companies, that even today, who are on the bleeding edge of commerce and technical innovation, will not even think about crypto as something they need to invest in in a top three priority. And when this happens, that will change. And the good news is, and the privilege I have of working at Aptos, is the founding team and the philosophy all come from that perspective. So we have been ready for three years, and we've just been improving on that readiness. That's awesome, awesome. Yesterday, you said something that really hit home for a lot of founders in the room, including myself. You said the world is ready for blockchain as applied technology beyond speculation. What are the clear 
clearest real world use cases you're seeing right now in Aptos? Are the ones that prove this shift is already happening? Yes, it's, it's a great question. So I break down our industry into two uh, paradigms. One is value exchange. Crypto, as we've seen over the past 10 years, is a very efficient equal access rails to do value exchange, whether it's trading or moving money across borders in an efficient way. The next phase is value creation. Okay. Value creation is all about how are we powering AI models? How are we unlocking new creator economies? How are we powering consumer technology like streaming in a decentralized way? All of these things open up new access points that the traditional internet industry has not uh, figured out yet because their incentive models are different and ownership and self-sovereignty principles are different. So one big stat I always point out is you know, by 2030, the internet advertising market globally will become $1 trillion a year industry. The amount of fees generated from crypto trading is nowhere near that. We have so much room to grow. So how are we changing not only AI, content, but how do we actually change subscriptions, commerce, the internet economy, and actually start to tread towards the scale that right now, if you see in the market, has unbridled upside. Right. And so that's the, the next part of the journey. Oh, yeah. And another thing, you called on developers in the crowd to stand up and connect. I heard that. Uh, that was one of the most human moments in the, of the entire meeting, I think. Why do you think this idea of connection, not competition, is central to Aptos culture? How do you keep that energy alive with the uh, conferences, lights up, uh, go down? So, you know, um, one thing, if you're familiar with kind of the Bay Area uh, as a technological hub in the United States is whether it's Facebook, Google, or any of the amazing companies there, the philosophy they teach with the engineers and the business people is bottoms up thinking and deep collaboration. It is not tops down business strategy. So the philosophy of all of the folks who built amazing businesses has always been through reaching across the aisle and collaborating. Google works with Apple, right? Facebook works with other folks. These are just the nature of how these engineers and builders live. I think that extends today to crypto. In a trustless environment, which is what we need to achieve, right? Where one dollar can move here to there yeah. without intermediaries validating why that's the case. You need people. And I think that is something that our industry over indexes on mm -hmm. as a strength, is that people are driving the next phase of innovation and growth. So the people that work at Aptos today have worked at other companies, other crypto companies, have relationships they've built, have founders they've helped raise money, and we want to be a part of that circle of trust. And that's why people matter so much. That's really nice. We also mentioned that uh, finance sits at the heart of the heart of Aptos. Uh, what do you envision for uh, for the ecosystem's next phase uh, beyond DeFi? Are we moving toward new uh, vertical like gaming, AI, or uh, social um, on Aptos? Yeah, it's a really good uh, question. I think the next phase we should just say finance because it is already clear that the way in which our networks work in a trustless and permissionless environment is a more efficient way to do finance in a globally accessible way. The businesses that I imagine you will see will look like businesses that we've seen in traditional tech, where they work hard to get product market fit, they manage their business through how much they can get their customers or consumers to pay or how much they can monetize them. They have investors with a very long view of outcomes, five, 10, 15 year view of outcomes. And those, that complexion of founders will obviously be the folks who've believed in crypto for the past 10 years, five years, but will also be people who've worked big jobs in Web2, who want to start their own companies, they will be coming here to build. And in order to greet them, we need to eliminate complexity. We need to make sure user experiences are easy. The developer experiences are no-brainers. And um, we also need to work on our product marketing as an industry, right? Yeah. Stop selling the oil, sell the car. Oh, yes. Yes, I agree with that. So also at the end of your speech yesterday, uh, you said something that really stuck with me. So you said we have to trust each other and show up for each other. Uh, that's not just tech, that's uh, leadership. What keeps you personally motivated to build this industry in this industry, especially through the noise and the, you know, the cyclicals and all that? I have never seen an industry, and in order to feel this, you have to go and see people on the ground. You have to go to Korea and meet the innovators on the ground. You have to be in New York and everywhere in between. I've never seen an industry where people who come from non-traditional backgrounds, who maybe didn't have the environment to let them get into the best school, to get into the best pedigree of career 
their journey, be extremely successful because they believe and because they know how to listen to users and because they show up every day. Crypto is a very public atmosphere, not only in a market sense through tokens, but also in terms of what your users or your constituents expect from you to drive a business. In traditional industries, you can go and hide behind quarterly investor calls, prepare for six months for each of them. In crypto, you show up every day to build in public. And that's what keeps me motivated. I think crypto has the best founders and entrepreneurs across any industry.